All right, now watch when you're talking that you don't move your head too much from side to side or your voice is gonna sound like you're on a trapeze or something. That makes sense, okay, yeah. Okay, no popping. Now, I don't chew gum, so That's it's all right. That's not what I'm talking about, Shelly. I'm talking about getting too close to the microphone like you are now. See, if you get too close, it sounds like your voice is exploding or something. Like when you say W-E-O-N, it's W-E-O-N. E-O-N. Right. No twisting, no popping. Okay, I can do this. But there's one thing you forgot about. See this knob right here? Oh, you adjust yeah. adjust this. Now, if you don't want your voice to sound too tiny and treble, you can adjust it like this. Or if you don't want it to sound too husky and bass, yeah. you can adjust it down here. Treble, bass, what, am I a DJ or am I an orchestra here? No, what you are is you're a little nervous. Now, was there anything mm. that I can do for you? Yeah, make it midnight so I can get started. Well, it's not even nine o'clock yet. What you got here is a log book, okay? This is required by the FCC. Yep. Well, in three hours, ready or not, Shelley Franklin goes on the air. Of course, news has always been the heart of WMON programming. Mm -hmm. Now, let's move on to radio, WEON in particular. Um, how did you acquire it? Well, it happened last winter. I had made an offer on the uh, station, and uh, everything was moving along very nicely. When all of a sudden, Alicia Van Dyne stepped in and tried to cut me out. Oh, really? Yeah. That little raid galvanized me into action, and I forced the owners to honor their uh, commitment to me. Uh, what about other media? Are you planning to acquire more? If the FCC allows. Oh, yes, that's right. My goodness, you're becoming a one-woman media monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> so far, I haven't added a newspaper to my, well, what shall I call it, little empire. But depending on how these feature articles of yours turn out, I may want to buy the Monticello News. I appreciate your concern, but I really can't talk to you right now. Why not? Because mine talk goes on the air in an hour, and I have a lot of notes to prepare. Beth, I don't believe you. You are so organized that you could probably do next Thanksgiving show right now. Oh, Dee Dee, please. I'm not going to budge until I get some answers. Dee Dee, this is absolutely absurd. Beth, who is this alleged new boyfriend of yours at the clinic? Frankly, I really don't think this is any of your business. Well, I'm making it my business because you couldn't possibly have some new boyfriend or other because you are in love with Miles Cavanaugh. Studio Six, may I help you? No, I'm sorry. Preacher's not here. May I take a message? Who is this? Well, I'm glad you like the show, but could you tell me what's going on? Preacher's been getting phone calls like this all week. Do you know Preacher personally? Then how did you know his name? I mean, how did you know my name? Hello? Don't force this. I wouldn't, Beth, unless I was your friend. If you were my friend, you'd leave me alone and let me get to work. Beth, you were there for me when I was in trouble, right? Yes. And when Judge Wallace was threatening me, you listened to me hour after hour. And when Calvin was doing that undercover operation, you sat up with me night after night. And I was glad to do it. But this is not the same situation, Dee Dee. I'm not in trouble. Are you sure about that? Oh, come on, Dee Dee. What kind of trouble can I be in? That's what I want you to tell me. There is nothing to tell. Well, one thing is for sure. Unless all those heart-to-heart -heart talks we had were absolute nonsense, you don't have a boyfriend at the clinic or anywhere else, which means you are lying, and you're lying to me, and that is trouble. Oh, uh, Jody. Jody, you look worried. Are you all right? I don't know. I just got one of those funny phone calls for Preacher. Oh, well, was it one of our listeners? I don't think so. Um, he just asked for Preacher. Did he have a European accent? 
No, he kind of sounded like a lobster fisherman. I don't know, some, from New England. Anyway, he said he just wanted to tell Preacher that he was doing a good job. Several men from all over the world suddenly just call up to praise Preacher on his work. I don't something's, something's not right. Do you enjoy what you do? Oh, yes, very much. And not just because these various enterprises are making money, either. The most fun for me is making improvements. I like to target a radio show or a television show, outline a new approach, and then sit back and, hopefully anyway, see some results. It must be very gratifying. Oh, it is. Uh, my only regret is that I have so little family left to share it all with me now. As you know, my nephew is my only remaining relative. Although I regard Skylar more as a son than anything. Yes, yes, of course. I cannot tell you how happy I am that Skylar and Raven are starting a family. Yes, uh, <clears throat> yes well, uh, I'm sure your readers won't be much interested in a doting aunt. No, no, not so. The human touch is very welcome. Well, it's the business touch that concerns me right now. I have to get over to W-E-O-N. Oh. Shelley Franklin is making her debut tonight. Oh, really? Uh, Geraldine, tell me, is, is she one of the uh, examples of the improvements that you've uh, accomplished? Well, I certainly hope she is. I'm sending that poor child out into shark-infested waters or airwaves. <laughs> would you like to come along? Oh, I'd love it, if it's all right. It's certainly. But would you give me just a few minutes, Nancy? I want to make a phone call. Certainly. I'll see you downstairs in the lobby. Three minutes. Hello, Raven, dear. It's Geraldine calling. There isn't anything the matter. I just want to see how you were, that's all. Well, you don't sound fine. As a matter of fact, you sound oddly subdued, not at all like yourself. Is anything wrong? Oh. <clears throat> well, yes, as a matter of fact, Skyler did come to see me, and he was very upset about something. Well, I don't know. He didn't confide in me. I thought he was going to there for a minute, but apparently he changed his mind. Now, see here, Raymond. I'm going to ask you a question. Have you done anything to upset him? It is not a silly question. I can cite you any number of examples where you... Well, all right, dear. I'll try to talk to Scarlett tomorrow, if you like. Yes, goodbye. So you got a guy with no accent, somebody from Europe, and some New Englander, huh? Yes, that's right. Well, what the callers want? To commend Preacher on his work. Yeah, well, it sounds like it's pretty popular with the United Nations, huh? Yeah. Calvin, our show is not broadcast in New York City, and I happen to think this is quite serious. And then what could be serious about praise? They knew Preacher's name and Jody's, too. Yeah, well, they work there, don't they? Calvin, I have never, ever publicly announced any of my employees' names just so I could avoid this type of harassment. Oh, I see what you mean. And Jody's only been here a couple of days. I mean, who would have even had time to find out her name? Look, Beth, I understand your concern, but um, I just don't see the harassment that you're talking about. I mean, a couple of guys have gone out of their way to call in and let fly with compliments. What could be the harm in that? I don't know. It's spooky. No, but uh, look, all I can tell you is to uh, keep me posted. No, all you can tell me is there's nothing the police can do. Not at this point. I'm sorry. Okay. Thanks, anyway. Yeah, look, if, uh, if Dee Dee's there, tell her that her, her husband's uh, lonesome, all right? <laughs> yeah, I will. Good night. Well, Calvin's lonesome, and there's nothing that the police can do. I'm not surprised. What? What about the cops? I mean, he's hurt yet. <laughs> No, not yet. I'm yeah, yeah, I know, I'm sorry. There's a long hallway outside if you want to take a walk or something. <laughs> You're crazy. If I start out down that hallway, I was going to keep going right through the front door. Look, I know you mean well and that you're only trying to help, but I don't appreciate being called a liar. <laughs> then tell me something that will prove me wrong. Beth, please, would you just let me help? Uh, now, it's really hard to work like this, you understand? Look, I've got a right to be nervous. And we have a right to some peace. We have a show to put on, too, you know. I don't believe you guys are doing this to me. All I need here is a little support, all right? You'll see. W-E-O-N is just one big happy family. 
We got a show to support. You understand that? Well, you know, I expected this from Jody, but you from families. Me, me what? Oh. Uh, pardon me, my hmm. dear. So don't let us interfere with this little rap session. <laughs> Do try to resolve your differences. Come along, Nancy. Let's go in here. It's sure to be much quieter. I don't think you should talk to me like that. Then I don't think I want to talk to you anymore right now, period. Good oh, night. Excuse me. Uh, so, uh, Dee Dee, hello. Oh, How are hello. You? How are you, Nancy? Mrs. Saxon. Hello, Beth. Nancy, Joe, yeah. one big happy family. I'll make a note of that. Uh, well, why don't you just say it's one big family and let it go with that? Mrs. Saxon, I'm so sorry if I was rude in there. Uh, that seems to be the order of the day. <sighs> yeah, well, listen, I'm sorry. Uh, did you need to see me about something? I just came to witness your debut to wish you well. Well, thanks. Listen, if I live that long, I'm sure I'll be delighted. <laughs> Uh, excuse me, ladies. Could we clear the studio, please? We've got a show to do in about ten seconds. Oh, of course. Thank you. Good show, Sorry. Beth. Sorry. <laughs> Hello, uh, this is Beth Carell, and this is Mind Talk. We're going to open our lines a few minutes early tonight because last night's topic, jealousy, was such a huge hit. <laughs> My talk, may I help you? Yes, I'm sure Dr. Carell would like to talk to you. Uh, if you just stay on the line, we'll put you through right after the commercial. <laughs> so this is it. Um, acoustic walls and a microphone and a bunch of records and me. You think that combination will bring in any listeners? Well, I don't see why not. What kind of music are you going to play? I, oh, are you going to do any show tunes? Huh? Well, you are an actress. Oh, you mean Broadway stuff? No, they say that there's really not much market for that. No, what I'm told is that soft rock raises the ratings. And you don't agree? Well, I just don't see why you should live life in the middle of the road when you can have it in the fast lane. But I'm, I'm really delighted that I have the job, and I mean, heck, I'd play bubblegum rock if Mrs. Saxon asked me to. Well, are you sorry that some hidden thunder closed? Oh, no. I mean, if it hadn't, I wouldn't be able to have this job, and I'm really looking forward to it. I'm just going to turn down the speakers in here when the soft music is on, that's all. Oh, boy. So you got my message. So you're lonesome, huh? Mm-hmm. Mm, well, let's just see what I can do about that. What were you doing at WEON so late anyway? Oh, I went there to see Beth. In the middle of the night? I was really worried about her. Why, well, what's the problem? Well, Miles told me that she mentioned having some new boyfriend down at the clinic, a doctor. <laughs> that doesn't sound like anything alarming to me. She doesn't have any new boyfriend, Calvin. She's completely gonzo over Miles. Yeah, so then where'd the idea of this boyfriend come from? She made him up. She's lying, and that's why I'm so worried. Well, maybe she just wants to make Miles jealous. Calvin, that is not her style. Then why invent a fictitious boyfriend? Because I think she's so terrified of having a relationship with Miles that she's deliberately putting obstacles in their path. It's important to remember that men and women treat this very differently. Men need to be reassured verbally, as well as physically by their wives. Women, on the other hand, happen to like, well, they're more old-fashioned. They still like the perfume and the roses and the flowers. Things that say, I love you, romantically, as well as symbolically. And... Hi, Miles. What brings you here? Oh, just prowling around, I guess. She seem any better? Worse. Something is really upsetting her. Was Dee Dee here earlier? Uh-huh. Her visit didn't seem to help, though. I wonder what would. Watch out, night owls. The night raiders here. Yeah, that's right. Shelly Franklin right here from midnight to dawn on WEONFM. You want to do something for me? Why don't you just... Sit down and relax and kick off your shoes along with your troubles, but don't fall asleep on me now because uh, Shelly Franklin's going to take care of you all night long. The night was made for two things, love and music. 
And if you can supply the love, I'll give you all the music you need, starting with this. Mm. She's pretty good, huh? Mm -hmm. Who would have thought that anybody who was so hyper an hour ago could be so soothing now? Mm. I know uh, somebody else was pretty soothing. Yeah? Yeah. We can just thank the Night Raider for getting me in the mood. Mm. Am I doing okay? But how does it sound? It sounds fine to me. Steamy, very professional. And you're doing fine. Oh. I'll worry about the morals charges later. Oh, gee, don't. Uh, do you think I'm overdoing it? Well, you said you were going to shake the rafters. Yeah, yeah, I guess I did. But should I should I ease up a little bit, really? Uh, well, maybe just a little. Good luck here. All right. Yes, John. Good luck. Bye. Oh. Hi. Glad you're back. This is Shelley Franklin, the hottest new sound in Monticello. Uh, you want to make me happy? Why don't you give me a call and let me know you're out there? Uh, I'll be taking requests on the WEON-FM hotline. So why don't you just call up and let me know what I can do to help you make it through the night. Once again, this is Dr. Beth Carell, and I'd like to thank you for joining us tonight and hope you'll join us tomorrow night at 10 p.m. for another hopefully helpful and informative show. Good night now. Hey, that was a nice show. I really enjoyed it. How can you say that to me? What? You know what I mean. You talked to Dee Dee, didn't you? Uh, yes, yes. Yes, yes. Well, I happen to think that's a very dishonorable thing to do. I think you should have come to Look, me. Uh, Beth, if you will remember, I did come to you. You didn't let me get three words out. That's because you were prying. I mean, the same thing that you've warned me about not doing, butting in all the time with you prying. You no, know, I really do not understand what it is that I've done to warrant this kind of hostility. It isn't hostility. What would you call it? It's... Miles, please, just let me rest. Oh, baby, it's 2 o'clock in the morning. You uh, want to get something to eat or something? Yeah, I'd love to get something to eat, but I'd rather have it at your place. Hmm. Well, I guess peanut butter. Well, then let's skip the food part. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Miles, uh, did anything happen? Nothing very good. I don't know what I did, but it sure didn't help. I just can't figure Beth out. I'm afraid if I try to pressure her anymore, I'll just alienate her entirely. You're aiming for America. Hello, insomniacs. Welcome to the wee hours. This is Shelley Franklin. We're... Right in the night and tame in the dark here, so uh, if you got a light burning anywhere, I want you to reach on over and turn it off for me. Concentrate on getting cozy. That's better. She's got a way about her. Is it? It's Beth. Yeah, all right. Yes, Beth. Calvin, I'm I'm sorry to bother you. Beth, come on in. Oh, Calvin. Can I get you something? No, no. Um. You were right. I lied. And I don't even know why, and now I feel even worse. <laughs> So, you prefer hamburgers over love, is that right? No, I don't. It's just...
just so desire for men to be affectionate on an empty stomach. Hmm. Anyway, I need the strength for you. Some music. Is this right? There seems to be four milkshakes in here. Yeah, it's what I um I It's what I ordered. What's wrong? I don't know. What is it? Is there something wrong? Somebody picked my lock. What do you want?